Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Hex's Force! Let's explore the Black Precipice, the Endless Corridor. I, I mean, Infinite Corridor. Now, Endless Corridor is another game of yours. Bonus points if you know the game. But anyway, yeah, you force scan the area, now we can find some hidden treasure! So, yeah, we can just do that. Let's go to the next area, then. Huh? What the? What just happened? Huh. That's weird. Huh. Oh, yeah. Well, if you remember from the last episode, you have to go through these things in a certain order. Let's double check that. You gotta go through red, then blue, and then white. So, that's the order you gotta go through the portals in. If you go through a different order, like white first, then it won't work. So let's try that one again. Uh, anything that's not one of those three colors uh, won't disrupt the sequence of the portals. So don't worry about those. Yellow portals won't also disrupt the sequence too. Yeah, like the green portals, the yellow portals just teleport you to and from wherever it sends you. So yeah, it has nothing. It won't disrupt the sequence. So you skip the white one for now. Let's go to that yellow one. You know, it suddenly occurred to me... Ah, yeah, you're not quite in the front row there. I guess he changed when he left our party briefly there. So. Now here, if you're playing on New Game Plus, this portal would be on. And let me see if we can see where it would take us. Yeah, you see that other purple one there? It would teleport us there to that chest. Uh, it contains either an illusion cloak or a peace mantle. I don't know what causes the chest to change its contents. I mean, I know you need a New Game Plus to get it, but that's about it. Uh, doing one path first, or second, or hard mode, or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that red portal, we don't want to take that one yet. So, uh, let's go on back. By the way, uh, yeah, this red portal, we don't want to take that. Uh, what the those two uh, armors do is a peace mantle is like a Moogle charm. You equip it, you can't get into any battles. Even if you touch an enemy, you'll just not get into a battle. The Illusion Cloak is kind of in between. Essentially what it does is it blocks enemies from being able to see you. So, I mean, unless you walk up like right in front of them. Where is it? No, it's here somewhere. Haha! -ha! More yellow, well, some yellow lapis. And the nice thing about the Illusion Cloak is that uh, it still allows you to get into battles if you want to, so it's really easy to sneak up on enemies. So, that's pretty nice. And then we get the Vitality Orb. Uh, let's see, we want to convert that. Oh, what does it do? Oh, yeah, it's like an Aether in a Final Fantasy game. Uh, yeah, 10, it restores, I think, 10 force, or RP. Yeah, totally worthless. So, yeah, you're just better off converting it for some good force points and moving on. It's like, where the hell am I on my map here? <laughs> yeah, I created all my own ASCII maps. They're in my walkthrough. It took me a while to make those things. Especially the one for the big dungeon. Okay, let's get up here. Now this one should work. You know, there was one thing I forgot to mention. I suppose I should have mentioned it at the beginning of the area. And this is your last chance to get those item drops that I uh, was telling you guys about. Save here, just in case something bad happens. I mean, you can always come back to either this area or another one of the earlier areas, but still! Oh, hey, who are those guys? Wait a minute, who else could be here? Wow. Hmm? Yeah, Tower of Judgment, making the world take it up the ass. Nah, that couldn't possibly be true. Hmm, reminds me of another game. What is it with these games with towers and gods living on top of them or 
something or other like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I kind of noticed them, like, two minutes ago. Maybe they're in charge of the place. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be fine. What's the worst that could possibly happen? And they got in here somehow. And that is true. How's it going? Well, you guys can probably guess who he is. Oh, they... They actually respond remotely normal to the furry! It's like, we've never seen one of you guys before! But no one's reacting to the flying squirrels at all! Well, just the one, but you know what I mean. You must be one of the other main characters because you have yellow hair. Well, okay, maybe it's not yellow yellow, but blonde. Not anymore. Not anymore. You don't seem to have very much armor on. Hmm? I've never heard of that place before. I'm trying to think of a Goonies reference I could make. Goondocks? No. No. Oh, yeah. Well, now you know. He's, uh, Levant, the other main character. So this is what happens between the two paths. Even though we have our own unique plot leading up to getting here, uh, we'll meet up with each other periodically. Huh? Hey, the only other flying squirrel in the game. Yeah, sorry, I kind of spoiled that there's more than one, but whatever. I wonder why those two got the little squirrels. Oh, okay. Hmm. Who's she? Apparently, the squirrels like the like the ladies. Can't say I blame them. One thing I do like about this game, as long as they give women an enormous rack, at least they cover her up and, it, well, yeah, so, well, for the most part, except one character. You know the one, Virus. Hmm. Can't you give me a better option than this? Uh... I don't even know what a baguette is. Is it like a bagel or something? Or, I don't know. Uh, I'll try to choose the least offensive option. Nope, didn't work. Oh well. Yeah, that's what she does. But yeah, well, as you can see, on Levant's path, you'd have three characters going to this area, but we only have two, so it's a little harder for Cecilia's path, because, well, there's only two characters for the enemies to target. But we also have the healing, so that kind of balances it out a bit. Whereas Levant's path would have more, uh, power behind it. Sure, why not? More party members! But, we can only have three party members at a time. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, uh, just so you know, uh, reserved characters get uh, no uh, experience points. Ah, Greek. Sounds like a great name. Sounds like the drunk at the bar I met earlier. No, no, just kidding. But yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, you may want to rotate in party members periodically when you have more than three. If only there were an item that would let reserve party members get 100% experience while they're out of the party. Uh, Ulu, can you calm her down? That's... What are you gonna do to her? Run! Come on, I wanted to see a fight. A little uh, staff symbol there. What the? Huh. That's weird. Yeah, step exactly on the same point as she did when she teleported. Now, we can't explore anywhere else in that first area there, but uh, don't worry about it for now. We'll, we'll be able to come back there later. Not today. I wasn't insulting her. I mean, it's not like she face palms as much as I do. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a Code Geass reference I could make. Enormously breasted, large breasted woman. Oh, hey. You mind if I just rest in your cleavage? Thanks. Who's Skulg? Eh, probably not important. Well, if you remember from the intro, Skulg was one of those uh, divinities on the list there. Although you probably don't remember that, it was just a whole bunch of random names, but that, that, well, you'll see. We'll learn more about that later. Oh. Teenagers to save the world, absolutely. Oh, man. Oh, I guess she must be a bit older than us, then. How old could she possibly be? I guess she likes the gossip. And she's got a little uh, teddy bear on her hat. Aw, isn't that cute? Pay no attention to the teddy bear, viewers. Oh, yeah, they were kind of telling us that when we got the Holy Rhea Fault or something or other like that. No, of course not. That would actually make logical sense. Hmm? Yeah, we're, we're, they're not into each other, Cecilia. Nope. Never gonna get together throughout the game. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, let's see what we got here. What do we do with that? gotta do every time you go to a monolith you can activate another portal that'll take you somewhere else oh, okay so that's how it works yeah. what's going on uh oh why didn't you just build him like that without having to do that what did that do that's what she's been doing. You can't ride on her breasts either, Ralu. You gotta do the work. You 
You know, if you could just teleport everywhere, couldn't you just take the Force Stone and teleport to all these monoliths immediately? I would think that would be really easy for you. Oh, yeah. So now we have the new fusion ability, which is essentially the crafting system of the game. It's kind of like Synthesis in Final Fantasy IX, except it doesn't cost any money, and you can do it at any time. So, yeah, normally I wouldn't like a JRPG that doesn't have money or shops or anything like that. I usually like having those in my games, but this game makes it work. It's kind of like when you had those uh, Moogle save points late in Final Fantasy IX where they would have a shop with them too, except this you can use at any time. So, all right. So let's start doing some crafting then. Sometimes uh, crafted items require force points in order to make, but for the most part, not really. So let's see what we got here. Let's see, we should have an element will. We want to make a purple lapis. Then we want to use that to make an arrow orb. The reason I want that is because wind elemental enemies have a tendency to be uh, have really high evade. So you want to have an arrow orb to deal with that. Okay, so we got that. Let's see, we got the aqua orb. We want to use that to make a hydra cane. Let's see, now for the armor, we should be able to get that for Cecilia. And let's see, we want to get a long cape, but I have a fur cape. What do we do? Well, what you got to do, go to Cecilia, press the square button, remove that. Now you can fuse. You can't fuse an item that you have equipped there, so you got to remove that. We got the long cape there. Let's see, mercenary cloak there. Let's see, one pair of traveler's shoes and the wind shoes. Normally, I don't have this many evil feathers, but if you do, you could make a pair of wind boots if you wanted to. Or if you got Majin cloths from the Salomas in the first area, you could make one of these. Or you could make a cestite comb. I'd probably make a cestite comb instead, but uh, yeah, I just think it's really hard to get Majin's Claws at this point in the game because uh, the Salomas are not really easy to find. So let's take a look at what I want to equip here. Okay, just taking a look at the setup here. Yeah, one thing about Hexus Force, you can equip multiple weapons at once. So even when we do get more Ragnifax, we'll just be able to equip more of them. You can equip up to four total and a full set of equipment there. So, yeah, for now, uh, items that we got, they're only going to uh, provide basic defense. Later on, well, the armor selection gets a bit more interesting. So, okay, we got that. Let's get a new piece of armor and the wind boots. Okay, we should be all set and ready to go. Let's see. Let's get rid of that, because we're never going to need that. Yeah, old equipment, just convert, be done with it. Oh yeah, and that was one other thing. With the uh, Element Wills, you want to try and get as many of those as you can, because it's kind of hard to find purple lapises early in the game to make those arrow orbs, so you want to do that. Let's see where this one takes us. Hmm, inside the Tower 13, huh? Well, we got this area here, but there's going to be a whole bunch of gates in our way, and we can't really do anything about that right now. Remember this place for later, viewers, especially if you're playing uh, a regular new game and, well, I guess in both a new game and a uh, new game plus there. But can we ever find a way to get out of the Tower of Judgment? Find out next time on Let's Play Hexes Force. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.